The crypto markets have been crashing this past week and have been in complete free fall. I'm going to tell you everything that you need to know and walk you through everything that's happened this past week that led us up to this point. And now that Bitcoin has reached these key levels that I've warned about, I believe this is going to be a tremendous buying opportunity and I'm going to share exactly how I'll be managing my portfolio into this new week. The first thing that really started to spook the crypto markets and introduce a ton of FUD and uncertainty is that Mt. Gox was going to be flooding the crypto markets with $9 billion worth of Bitcoin. This has been a decade-long bankruptcy battle that has finally been resolved. See, Mt. Gox was the largest crypto exchange back in 2014 and at one point handled over 70% of the world's Bitcoin transactions. And in 2014, the exchange collapsed and was hacked of over 850,000 Bitcoin. And after this decade-long bankruptcy battle, much of those Bitcoins are finally going to be issued to creditors. These are people that were buying and selling Bitcoin back in 2014 when the price was just about $1,000. And it's very obvious at this time that these users are up hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. And it's much expected that the users will be selling their Bitcoin to realize those profits after waiting almost 10 full years. We can actually track Mt. Gox wallets on chain and see all of their activity moving around. Back in April, we could see that this wallet had about $10 billion worth of Bitcoin. And over time, you can see here starting in July, you see these steep drops. And this is them sending that Bitcoin to different exchanges. So that way they could go ahead and issue back to creditors. And if we zoom in on the actual month of July, we can see these steep drops, right? One here on July 16th and another one here on July 30th. And we can go ahead and scroll down and actually see the flows in real time where you can see they're sending 56 million, 56 million, 879 million to these different accounts. And after all these distributions in the past month, the wallet sits at about $2.4 billion left, expecting to go to creditors. Tracking these wallets, we can see specifically that one of the wallets is linked to BitGo. And this wallet received almost $2.2 billion worth of Bitcoin we can see just six days ago. With Mt. Gox flooding the market with $9 billion worth of Bitcoin, as if that wasn't enough. In the same month of July, we have Germany selling $3 billion worth of Bitcoin. Earlier this year, the German state Saxony actually seized about 50,000 Bitcoin from a movie piracy site. And at first had no intentions of selling this Bitcoin. But they had kind of reviewed their laws and regulations and were deemed that they're actually not allowed to hold these assets. And because the German state Saxony did an audit of its assets, they were forced to unload at a very malicious and aggressive rate. You can see unloading $3 billion worth of Bitcoin in a matter of days and by July 13th had completely out. Now that we've covered both Mt. Gox and Germany selling about $11 billion worth of Bitcoin, this actually takes us toward the end of July where the Ethereum ETF starts trading and one would think that this might actually be bullish. But I actually wrote my complete analysis of the Ethereum ETF and I anticipated that it would be a sell the news event. One of the core reasons why I expected a sell the news event is a similar playbook that we saw with the Bitcoin ETF and largely because traders were able to buy Grayscale's ETF at a significant discount trading at times between negative to 40% of its net asset value and that when the ETF was approved that discount basically closed you can see here to zero. I went ahead and analyzed the asset under management leading up to the spot ETF trying to determine of how much of these assets were able to take advantage of that significant discount window that we would expect these traders to kind of unwind. It's clear now while my thesis was correct I might have been a bit too bearish as I expected about $3 billion worth of outflows in the first 30 days. But the main reason why I thought these outflows was going to greatly impact Ethereum's price action is because even though Ethereum sits at this $400 billion market cap, it's actually largely illiquid when you compare it to something like Bitcoin. The reason why I say Ethereum is illiquid when compared to something like Bitcoin is because Ethereum is heavily used throughout DeFi. For example, projects like Lido have accumulated almost $25 billion of staked Ethereum, or projects like Eigenlayer, which is another $13 billion. As you look at all these other layer twos, there's just billions of dollars of ETH that is just spread out throughout these ecosystems. Looking at Ethereum ETF inflows and outflows, people were very excited the first day, plus $100 million flew into those ETFs. But following, we had four straight days of outflows totaling hundreds of millions of dollars. And even when we finally do get a green day, it's decimated by another negative outflow. 
Since the ETF started trading, there's been a total of about a half a billion dollars of outflows in the first two weeks. What was also happening at the same time of the ETF approval and millions of dollars of outflows is that Jump Trading, one of the most prominent market makers and investment firms, had actually started to as well unwind and redeem hundreds of millions of dollars worth of Ethereum. Jump Crypto is the same firm that's actively being sued for manipulating Terra Luna where they walked away with $1.3 billion worth of profit while the project completely collapsed. Scrolling down to look at this wallet, we can see over the past few days, there's just hundreds of millions of dollars worth of ETH being sent and redeemed and sold. What was probably most surprising of Jump Crypto's actions is that they were selling relentlessly on a weekend, which is typically low volume and low activity. And you would expect such as an investment firm would want to sell into more higher volume trading activity to be able to get the best price and not go ahead and continue to bring that price action further down. Now we're going to shift our focus to what Japan is doing and for the first time in 17 years has decided to raise interest rate to combat inflation and a weakening yen, their native currency. You might have seen a lot of videos over the past year encouraging to travel to Japan as a US citizen and that's because the dollar was just incredibly powerful. We can see here, this is the chart of the Japanese yen when compared to the dollar and the yen has been in a free fall. But with Japan deciding to step in and for the first time in 17 years, go ahead and raise interest rates, we can see there has been this massive reversal, which has really spooked markets everywhere. People became so comfortable borrowing against the yen and betting against it and investing in international markets that when Japan finally stepped in and we saw this really kind of dramatic reversal with the US dollar, those investors were really forced to liquidate all those assets, especially in the US market with these prominent tech companies, which is why we saw equities and stocks start to crash as well. With all these things happening in the background on kind of parallel timelines, we now actually have the Fed meeting that has recently happened on the 30th to 31st of July, and people were expecting a rate cut. But the Fed decided to hold rates steady, which caused people for a lot of concern. And as we transitioned into August, the job report dropped and the numbers were abysmal and shocked everyone. Unemployment is up now to 4.3%. People's biggest concern now is that the Fed is behind the curve, right? That they should have anticipated that with equity selling off, with markets around the world and free fall, that we are actually need to take action now. But the Fed decides to maintain rates, so we see equities continue to sell off on this news as people believe that the Fed is just too far behind the curve now. Now, looking ahead to the next meeting, which is going to occur in September, about 40 days from now, people are actually predicting now a 72% chance that they're going to cut interest rates by half a basis point. Now, this is actually even higher than expected. Originally, the market was only factoring cutting interest rates by a quarter of a basis point, so you can just see now that the market has no appetite at all for the Fed to continue to hold these rates steady. Everything is crashing, people are rushing to sell, and the Japanese exchange, the Nikkei, actually sees the largest one-day drop since 1987. And following that, the US market wakes up Monday morning and sees $2 trillion completely decimated through the markets. Almost every single stock is red on today. What I find really interesting, though, is that the Nikkei did have this massive drought on, but they've actually made this massive V-shaped recovery, and now that it's Tuesday, is actually ending up higher than the previous day, which gives me a sense that we have actually seen a bottom forming here. Now that I've given you probably 10 plus reasons to be bearish on this industry and just completely walk away forever, I'm actually going to tell you about why I'm actively bullish at these key levels and why now is the time that I finally have started to buy crypto again. We've actually seen this type of price action before where it seems like the sky is falling and everyone is just trying to sell as fast as they can. And it looks very similar to March 2020 when we saw this three massive weeks of complete downfall. And if you remember, it actually was followed by a complete V-shaped recovery. And we're kind of witnessing the same thing right now where we now have again this complete cascading downfall. It's obvious that times are different and there's a lot of different macro factors that have to be considered with these markets. But more often than not, when we see extremely sharp declines, they're often usually followed by aggressive reversals. And that's a lot of times because you see this forced capitulation and usually the news isn't really as bad as maybe people anticipated. And then, of course, people start to buy back in quite rapidly. 
And with the Japanese Nikkei bouncing so aggressively and actually ending up higher, kind of gives me a sense of confidence that a lot of this unwinding has already been occurring and that we might have actually already just seen the bottom here, which was the final stages of kind of forced capitulation. I actually would expect going into tomorrow that we actually see a nice bounce in the US markets as well. With all that in mind, the Fed has definitely been paying attention to the reactions of the market, and I do believe that we are going to get our first rate hike coming in September, which is only about 40 days away, which I think aligns nicely with everything else kind of starting to fizzle out and really bring people back to this equilibrium. One of the things that I also believe that greatly impacts these crypto markets that I kind of expect to start cooling down over the next few weeks is the Ethereum ETF, right? We have seen half a billion dollars of outflows. And as we look at the daily trend, what we can actually see a lot of times is these net outflows actually getting quite smaller, right? So this seemed to be the largest day back on the July 25th, a negative 162 million, but that was followed by just negative 98 negative 77, 54, and now we are finally positive again with a plus 48 million. I think you're starting to now see the outflow start to bottom and this trend reverse. Another indicator that's actually been quite bullish is the global M2 money supply is actually breaking out. And this simply just means the amount of cash that people on hand, which is obviously good for overall stocks and equities in the markets. And everything else just seems to be behind us. The German state is no longer selling Bitcoin as it's already completed its sale of its $3 billion. And Mt. Gox has pretty much gone ahead and credited about 80% of its $10 billion Bitcoin with now just $2 billion left. Over the last few days on both TikTok and YouTube Shorts, I went ahead and shared my Bitcoin price predictions and I predicted that we could see as low as 52,000 Bitcoin, which we actually did wick right nicely into this box here and then bounce back of it pretty aggressively. I am kind of expecting a chart like this and I do believe we can get to about 80K Bitcoin by the end of this year still. And I actually think this price action, while it was incredibly painful, including for myself, actually works out for the better. Because now I believe we've had this forced capitulation, right? We've gone ahead and wicked to 52K, which seemed like a good line of support, and we bounced back up quite violently. Now what we can kind of do is reset expectations for the rest of the year. And I think what you have to consider here is coins that have just been incredibly reflective and strong on this bounce. For example, Solana. I mentioned in my recent YouTube short that I picked up a bunch at 135 and the next level I was going to be looking at was 110. And you can see we wicked down exactly here to about 110 before aggressively bouncing back up. I've additionally created this chart, which tracks a bunch of different top altcoins across multiple different sectors and narratives. And I actually like to look at which of these coins are actually bouncing the hardest, kind of going into this relief. And we can see there's been a couple of projects that are really outshining. We have Tau, which is a leader in AI, Pendle, a leader in DeFi, Lido, of course, Liquid Stake ETH. But we also have things like Pepe, which is a meme, and some others here. It's also clear that we are now in the era of the meme coin super cycle, and it would be silly at this point in the game to ignore meme coins because they have just so much volume and liquidity that they have become really as attractive investments almost. And looking at some of these top meme coins, we can see that some of the biggest ones that are really getting a lot of attention, things like Brett on base chain, Popcat on Solana, Michi on Solana, and some of these others have really kind of come out of the gates with strong bounces and strong traction. All in all, going through everything, I believe we're at really key levels that are extremely attractive for the next six months. And I believe we ultimately end up much higher this year. I'm still targeting an 80K Bitcoin. How I've positioned my portfolio for this week as I prepare for the next stage of the market is I've loaded up on a ton of Solana and I still hold massive spot positions of both Bitcoin and ETH. And at this point, of course, I'm looking for great opportunities to continue adding to some of my favorites like Pendle Finance, a leader in DeFi, and Undo Finance, a leader in RWAs. I'm still holding or will be looking to add to my biggest position meme coins, which is going to be Dog With Hat on Solana, Michi on Solana. We have Pepe on Ethereum, which continues to be strong. And I've actually picked up some Miggles, which is on base chain. And it seems to be the mascot, which has been both promoted by Byron Armstrong, the CEO of Coinbase, as well as many of the base chain social accounts. 
We've covered everything you needed to know about these last few weeks, as well as some top indicators that you can continue to watch and best figure out how to manage your own portfolio. I know one thing is clear at these levels I have started to buy, and I do believe we ultimately end higher in the next six months. But be sure, drop me a follow on Twitter, send me a DM if you have any questions, and remember, in the description below is a completely free community Discord. We have over 1,000 gem and alpha hunters, so come join us there. But see you in the next one.